But I had a request on Discord for how to rig a quadruped, uh, rig, uh, animate a quadruped character in Maya. So I downloaded a dog. Here's a little sausage dog. I'm going to uh, put the bones in it, show you how to do the IK. Um, so first thing is I'll put the dog in its own layer so that I can turn it on and off. Call that the mesh layer. And then I'll start making some bones. So I'll go to the side view, switch to wireframe, and go to the rigging shelf and add some bones. So I'll start with the spine, start at the pelvis. I'll go one, two, three, four for the spine. We'll put the neck there and the skull there. Uh, then I'll do the hind leg. So we'll have a pelvis, knee, heel, ball of the foot, and the tip of the toes. And for the front leg, we'll, we'll do the clavicle, so we'll have the clavicle there, and the shoulder to the elbow, and the wrist, and then the tip of the paw. I'm not going to do the individual toes on the paws, um, or the ears. If you want, you can rig the ears. We'll do the tail as well. So I'm hitting G to repeat the previous command and I'll just add in the tail. Actually, I'll click on the pelvis here to start this chain from the pelvis. Okay, you don't need to go past the end of the tail because you're unlikely to use an IK chain on the tail. The tail is going to be FK. Whereas the limbs, you need to lock the limbs onto the ground so they'll be IK. When you're making an IK chain, it's usually good to continue past the last joints. You see it, it goes a little bit further. All right, now it's time to name the joints. So shift click here expands them. The first one is the pelvis. So I just use, I just leave the joint prefix and put the name after it. So we'll have spine one, spine two, probably just fast forward this. All right, now I need to move these bones over to the left. So I've got shading x-ray joints turned on here so that I can see through the character. Just move this over. So I'm being careful to move it only in the x-axis. That looks good. I'll start on the, high, the top of the hierarchy because it moves all the children when you do that. Now the clavicle actually, well I should check some reference. I don't know what a sausage dog clavicle looks like so I'm going to google some reference. Let's see. Okay, so I've got Dash Hunt Skeleton. Let's see where the clavicle actually goes. So the clavicle and it touches the touches the spine and comes right very far forward actually. And that's where the shoulder is. So I'm gonna to try to match that anatomy. So this is actually very close to here. In fact, I think I will just make it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll parent it later. I'll leave that separate and I'll bring this right over to the shoulder. And from the, from the reference, it's quite far forward. So I'll bring it over here. Always check the skeleton of the animal you're rigging to get the bones in the right place. This model is pretty good, they're nice and straight. Now, painting the skin weights on this is going to be horrible because there's overlapping polygons in here. So you will have to hide some of this mesh so that you can paint this part. So I'm not gonna go through painting the skin weights. This I can be a separate tutorial, but um, this will be tricky. You'll have to hide parts of the mesh so that you can paint the skin weights in this region. Actually, the model is very good. You're supposed to overlap the polygons to create the feeling of 
uh, soft limbs pressing into each other, so this has been modeled or sculpted very well. It looks like it's actually pretty good for animation, but it's it's tricky to rig. It's tricky to peg the skin weights, I should say. Okay, now I'll connect the... Gosh, let's name this. This is the tail. Don't wait till your project is nearly finished before you start naming everything. You've got to name things at the start so that when you mirror them, they're pre-named and you can flip the, the L and the R. Same with your materials. Don't have your hypershade full of thousands of random materials. Let's see what this has got. Yeah, so there's the there's the material on the dog. So let's name, let's name it right now, actually. Name your materials, name your bones, name everything as soon as you make it. Um, now I can connect the clavicle to spine 3. So middle click and drag, connect to the Maya. And you see it makes a tiny little connection joint there. And I can connect the left hip to the pelvis. Oh, the plane is the dog, let's call it the dog. Okay, that's the skeleton. Uh, nearly ready. Let's mirror. So we can mirror the bones from one side to the other. So let's pick the uh, left hip. Go to the mirror joints button. Where is that? Hmm, doesn't seem to be a button for that anymore. Maybe it's in rigging. Skeleton mirror joints. Okay, let's do it. Do it from here. Okay, what plane am I mirroring on? Um, when you're making a character, it should always face forward Z. So this is correct. He's facing Z. So I'm going to mirror on the YZ plane. And I'm going to switch L for R. So underscore L is going to switch for underscore R. That'll make the right side. And uh, let's apply that. There we go. So there's the other side. And if you look in the outliner, you see it's all named underscore R. Uh, apply. Okay, that's the skeleton done. Now I'm going to bind the skin. So I pick the root node of the joints, shift click the mesh, skin, bind skin. Uh, we're going to do all the defaults, I think. Maximum influence is five. Let's just make it three, just to make it simpler to paint the skin weights. Um, bind. Now, if it's worked, you should see the joints change color to this kind of spectrum, showing you the hierarchy. And if we rotate the joints, we should see the limbs rotate with them. Yeah, okay, it works. The skin weights aren't going to be great. It's just using default skin weights, so I expect there will be some flaws. And there are, but I don't care. You can fix the skin weights in your own time. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to do the rig now. Let's just check that the knees work. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, let's build a control rig. So the the tricky part of the control rig is the inverse kinematics. So let's do the IK for the we'll do the forearm or the foreleg first. It's easier. So essentially, we want to be able to put the paw on the ground have the toes stay forward and have the body and the head move around while the paw is still. So we need an IK chain from here to here. So I'm going to make an IK handle, double click it to get the options, and I need the rotate plane solver. So the, the rotate plane solver IK includes a pole vector which defines the direction of the elbow bends. Now, it's important that when you build your character, you have the elbow already bent in the correct axis. Let me do a quick demonstration. If you create a string of joints in a, in a roughly straight line, then when you add the IK, oops, just 
just want to get rid of that one. When you add the IK, you really don't know which way it's going to bend. It's random. When you move the IK handle, okay, it happens to bend that way. If you want to be sure that you're going to get the bend the right way around, then you build your, your bone chain with the pre-existing bend. So if this was supposed to be an elbow, I would build it like this, or a knee. I would build it with the bend already in place, so that when I add the IK, it will definitely continue to bend in that plane. And it will work nicely. And of course, this, this model already has the knees and the elbows bent correctly. It's really more of an issue with human characters. With human characters, you've got to make sure that the knees are slightly bent and that the elbows are slightly bent. So let's do the IK chain from the shoulder to the wrist. And then let's move it and check that it works. There it is. So there's some pretty bad skin weights on the body, but I'm just going to ignore that. Now I'd like to be able to keep the paw horizontal when I move the foot controller around. So I'm going to add an additional IK. I'm going to switch this type to the single chain solver because I don't care about the pole vector. This is just a one joint IK. So I'm going to go from here to here. Let's try that again from here to here. So here's our two IK handles. Let's name these. This is the IK handle for the left four left L. And this is the IK handle for the paw from paw L. So that's all the pieces you need to control the, uh, the front paw. Now we need a controller to move it around, so let's just use some polygon controller. Let's make a cube. Um, it's important not to scale your controllers. So when you're building controllers, don't use scale. So you might be tempted to just put this in the right place and scale it. And that's, that's going to lead to issues. If you ever have to link scaled objects to each other, they'll deform badly. I'll show you what I mean. If I have a cube here, and I scale it. Actually, let me duplicate it first before I scale it. So I have a second cube. I'll scale the first one, and then I'll link them. So Q2 is a child of Q1, and then I'll rotate this, and it skews, because it's inheriting the parent scale on one axis, and that's messing it up. So you must never scale your controllers, because if later on you link other things like weapons or clothing or other things to the controllers, they'll get skewed. So how can you fix this? Undo the rotation. Unlink it. You can freeze the transformation. So you see it's got a scale Z here. You can go modify freeze transformation. That gets rid of the scale. Or you can just work in, in face mode and move the faces around. That won't mess up the scale. Now that the transformation is frozen, if I parent it, it will work fine. Okay, let's start again. Make a cube for the controller. We'll call it controller left paw. Actually, my naming convention is a uh, Paul underscore L, isn't it? Now I'd like to snap this exactly onto the joint here, so that when I animate it, the joint pivots from the right place. So I'll turn off the mesh, hold V for snap to vertex, and snap it. V also snaps to bones. Then I'll resize this in face mode. Let's make a layer for the joints as well. And another layer for controllers. Uh, 
And I like to have a transparent material on my controller so that I can see the model a bit better. So let's make a material. I'll have a new Lambert. Let's call it controllers. And I'll just make it a transparent color. So let's make it a color that's different to the dog so we can see it. Okay. So I want to be able to move this around and have the leg follow it. So I just need to connect the two IK handles to the controller and now I can move it. So I can move that around. It animates the, the leg and I can rotate this to rotate the pole. Now the next step is to get the elbow to point the right way. You may want the elbow to pivot in a different direction. If you select the IK handle here, you'll see it has a property called uh, roll. Or is it twist? Maybe it's twist I'm going to use. Yeah, twist controls the direction that the elbow is pointing. And rather than having to go into the channel view and manipulate the twist, I want to put a controller in the viewport that I can just grab and manipulate the elbow, so let's add another controller. So this is the front elbow left. And once again I will snap this onto the bone. Uh, do I name my material? Let's go back to Hypershade. Yeah, I did. I named it controllers. Okay, so that makes it easier to put the material. You can just right click and say assign existing material controllers. Now I'd like to get the elbow to point at this and you do that with a constraint called the pole vector constraint. So you select the IK, then you select the controller, or maybe it's the other way around, I can never remember. Then you go constrain pole vector. Yeah, if you get an error, you've got it the wrong way around. So select the controller first, then the IK, constrain pole vector. If you get it right, you'll see this line appear, and you'll see that the triangle points at the elbow. So this is useful because now I can manipulate the elbow with this. And it's pretty common to connect this to the foot controller. So I take that and just connect it to the foot controller. Now I can move the whole foot and elbow as one piece. And I can also rotate the elbow. So you have to repeat that process for the right side. You can't just mirror uh, the control rig. You have to build it again. You can mirror joints and you can mirror skin weights, but you can't mirror your control rig, at least not easily. Now we'll look at the hind leg, because the hind leg is more complex because of the uh, long heel. And you want to be able to slide the heel backwards and forwards. Now I'm going to rig the hind leg. So let's check that I've got the rotate plane solver. And go from the hip to the heel. So this is going to be for moving the whole hind leg. And now I'm going to use two of the single chain solvers to position the foot and also to roll the heel backward and forward. So this one will go from here to here. I'm going to name these now before I get lost. So this is the IK for the rear leg left. This is the rear heel. And then one more so that I can keep the paw flat on the ground, which goes from here to here. This IK rear paw left. 
So let's look at what each one of these does. The rear leg moves the whole thing. The rear heel moves this part. And the rear paw just wiggles the tip. Let's uh, use similar controllers. I'll make a cube. Put the material on it. Uh, let's put it in the controller's layer. Make sure everything's in the controller's layer. Yep. Put it in the right place. So I'll use snap to snap it onto this joint. Now, oh, where's this going to go? This is actually going to go here. This controller is going to be controlling the whole of the leg. So I'm going to link the, if I link it temporarily just to show you, it's, it's removing the whole thing. So it's actually going to go up there. So this is a controller for the rear uh, leg, we'll call this. Now, I would like the foot to not rotate when I move this. So I'm going to relink this just to show you what's happening. When I move this, see how the foot is rotating. I would prefer for it to stay flat on the ground. I want to be able to slide the foot around the same facing. So I'll take these two IK handles and just connect them to that. So now all of the IK is connected to this. And now you see it stays completely level. I'll turn the mesh back on so you can see. The foot stays level on the ground. Very nice. Now another thing I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to rotate the heel forward and backwards, pivoting about this point right here. So I'm going to create a new controller, a torus. And let's uh, change the size a little bit. You can left click on the name and then middle click in the viewport to slide these values around. Let's put the material on it. Put it in the layer. I'm going to snap it to this point here and stand it up 90 degrees. Let's just adjust the radius a bit bigger. The idea is that rotating this will push the knee and the heel forward and backwards because that's an action you'll need for running. So let me name this the controller for the rear heel left. Now I'm going to modify the hierarchy a little bit. Uh, where'd my other controller go? Well, I haven't made a controller yet, have I? There should be another controller for the foot. Did I delete it? There is No, it's just really small. It's inside the dog. Okay, so I'm going to resize this. And again, I'm not going to scale it. I'm going to go to face mode and scale it and modify it in face mode because that won't mess up the uh, original transform. Let's just do it something like this. You can make your controllers a better match for the anatomy if you want to. You can use NURBS curves, whatever you like. So this should rotate the whole foot. Yes, it does. Um, but what I want, what I really want to happen is for this heel. When I rotate this, it pushes the heel forward. So I'm going to take the IK for the rear leg and connect it to this new he heel controller. Okay, let's see what this looks like. So now I can push the heel forward and backwards. And now if I link the heel controller to the rear leg, I can move the whole thing with this. So this moves the whole foot forward and backwards. I can rotate the foot and I can also push the heel forwards. Of course, if you push it too far, it's going to pop back and that's because I haven't set up the pole vector yet. So let's set up the pole vector on the knee. 
so I can constrain the knee. So let's have another sphere. This will be the controller for the rear knee. Left. I'll snap it to the knee by holding V and then just move it forward a little. And then I'll uh, put the right material on it, put it in the right layer, yep. and then I'll do the pole vector. So it's going to drive the IK handle for the rear leg. So I get that and then that constrain pole vector. It's worked. I got them in the right order this time. You see the little line there shows the connection. Go to wireframe mode, you'll see the arrow which indicates the pole vector's direction. And if you move this, you can wiggle the knee left and right. So that's all the controls you'll need to manipulate a, a dog like leg or even a human's leg. Uh, this one controls the whole thing. Let's just connect the knee controller to this so that it moves with it. So this moves the whole limb backward and forward. You can also rotate this to rotate the pole. Um, this will move the knee, generally you just move it left and right, and this will rotate the heel forward. So a combination of all those working together is enough to uh, animate the limb. Now for things like the tail and the, the neck, the pelvis, you can just use regular forward kinematics. Let's do a controller for the pelvis. This will just be FK or forward kinematics. So I'm just going to use a parent constraint for this. So let me set the radius nice and big. Snap it onto the pelvis. Put the right material on it. Uh, I'll scale it in face mode. Let's select all in my control shift A. I know it's not control A because that toggles the attribute editor. Okay, this is supposed to move the pelvis. Now, I don't want to just link the pelvis to this. Um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, if, if I link the pelvis directly to, if I link bones directly to controllers, it will mess up the nice hierarchy we have where the bones, the joints are all in one hierarchy and the controllers are separate. Also, it will mess up my layers. If you, if you link a joint to a controller, the joints will all suddenly be in the controllers layer. So I want to keep them separate and to do that I use a parent constraint. So instead of linking them in the outliner, I just shift select the pelvis and I do constrain parent. This gives you the same effect as parenting without moving anything in the outliner. And you can delete the parent constraint by deleting this thing here in the outliner. So this lets me move the dog's pelvis while the foot stays. Now I haven't rigged the other side so the other foot is moving. But th this lets you do animation where the feet are stable on the ground and you can have the dog or the animal move forward and backwards. And essentially, you can do the same thing. You can do uh, just a regular controller with a parent constraint for all of the spine joints and the tail and the neck. You don't need to do IK on those. There's one more thing I forgot to add. You'll probably want to be able to move the whole rig around. So create a parent for the whole thing. Uh, let's just use a plane here. Make it nice and big. So this will be a, a global move controller that will move the whole character. Let's put it in the right layer. Give it a name. I'll just call it controller global. And all you have to do to uh, get the whole character to move around is to link all of the existing controllers to this. So let's minimize the outliner to make it a bit simpler. So I just take the controller for the two legs 
and the pelvis. And if you finish the rig, you'll have the controllers for the right side and all the additional controllers for the tail as well. And take all those and connect them to the global controller. And then you can move the whole character around with this. So that's for moving the character. Uh, this is for moving the front paws. This is for the rear paws, the rear legs. Uh, this rotates the heel. You can also control the knees with these pole vectors and the elbows. And this and all the other controllers on the spine would move the whole character. Okay, that's it. Um, so that's basically it. That's how I rig a quadruped. Now you, like I said, you can't mirror this to the right side. You have to just build it again on the right side. I'll, um, I'll take a screenshot of this and zoom in so you can see the hierarchy of the whole thing and try to match it. Um, I realize this is probably very uh, low resolution at the moment. So I'll zoom in in the video so you can see uh, the whole hierarchy. I think I've expanded everything there. Yeah, that's the whole thing. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope it helped.